<clears throat> How you doing, my man? You doing you know all right? Chinese, you know the Chinese curse? May you live in interesting times. <laughs> we're living in very interesting times. Yeah, we are. We're gonna go. We're gonna go live right now, my man. Okay. How long do you want to go for? Uh, this is only gonna be a quick update, about ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. Okay. okay well, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll shake everybody in their pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> And we are live. We are live right now on the GLC Facebook page with none other than Avi Lipkin. And uh, Avi is a beloved member of our family, uh, sharing this on other platforms too. Avi, catch us up on how you are doing personally first. Okay, well, very well personally. Uh, and uh, as you know, as long as my wife uh, suffers with me and doesn't kill me, I'm in fantastic condition. Um Today she had some uh, dental work, so three hours of operation, and so now she's in bed resting. I run, ran out. That's why you missed me, because I went shopping to buy her things that you know are soft, that she can eat, because she's lacking teeth now. Uh, she'll be okay, but uh, if my wife is okay, I'm okay. So that's good. So we're, we're doing well. There you go. Well, people who are looking at the headline, Israel at war. Folks, Israel is still at war. And Avi, you've got some new details uh, to share, as I continue to share these on multiple platforms, uh, what's happening right now, boots on the ground in Israel? Okay, well, firstly, as you probably know from our uh, shows that we've been doing, uh, things have been heating up uh, on the Lebanese border. It's fair to say, uh, after six months of fighting in Gaza, that we've pretty much ironed out the problem. I, uh, Gaza now... Uh, does not uh, provide any kind of a threat to Israel like it did six months ago with, with thousands of rockets being fired. Uh, Gaza is being purged. So the, sh the emphasis now is shifting over to the second front. Uh, you know, our contention always has been that uh, Iran is an octopus and uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon is one of the tentacles and Gaza was one of the tentacles and that, that tentacle got chopped off by the Israeli military. Uh, it was a painful you know, war for us, but uh, we did the job. Uh, Gaza is no longer a threat to Israel. Uh, Hezbollah, on the other hand, is 10 times more powerful than Gaza. And if we go to war with the Hezbollah, uh, the Iranians have armed uh, Hezbollah to the hilt. And uh, so what Israel has been doing the last few weeks uh, is Israel, uh, has a bank, we call it a bank, like you go to the bank for money, right. we have a bank of targets. And uh, we pretty much know where everything is. So what we what we can do, there are things that we can destroy by air attack without uh, sacrificing soldiers. And that's what we've been doing for the last six months. We've been grinding down Hezbollah in such a way that the, 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 the danger from Hezbollah is there, but it's getting a little weaker here and there. And Hezbollah is also one of the tentacles of the octopus. Now, one of the problems here, which is what the Israeli military is addressing now, is that Iran has its commanders spread out in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and of course the Houthis, who, by the way, uh, struck an American ship yesterday. I don't know if it was in the news there. An American ship was hit by uh, rockets from uh, Yemen, from the Houthis. There's so much that's not being told in the media in the States. Anyway, so there was a very, very senior commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards of Iran in Damascus, in Syria. And uh, we got the information where he was. And uh, he was with six of his top uh, lieutenants, six of his top commanders. And the Israeli Air Force eliminated them. And in, in, there were six Israeli uh, Air Force jets all launching missiles at the same time. And it was in a building right next to the Iranian embassy. It was one of the consulate buildings. And so these seven terrorists, including the most important commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, um, Islamic Revolutionary Guards, was killed along with his uh, six uh, comrades. Uh, the Iranians are furious. 
So today, now you're asking about boots in the ground, there was a CIA report to the Israelis that uh, Iran is going to launch a, um, a, a cruise missile attack at uh, Israel within the next 48 hours. And you have to remember that within those 48 hours, we're talking about Friday. Friday is the last Shabbat, the last week, at the last Saturday of Ramadan. Ramadan is the so-called holy month of the Muslims. Uh, that's Friday. Also, it's Jerusalem Day for the uh, Iranians. Uh, Jerusalem Day is the day that the Iranians commemorate uh, capturing Jerusalem and taking it away from the Jews and Christians. Uh, so uh, the, it seems like we're headed towards a, co a confrontation on Friday. Uh, it could be tomorrow. It could be in the next few hours because the CIA said to us within 48 hours. That could be any time. Uh, as I was coming home from the uh, shopping and I had the radio on and I heard that uh, the UNIFIL military group of the United Nations in Lebanon has been withdrawn. So they've, they've pulled out all their troops. And when you see uh, foreign troops being pulled out of a certain country, you know a war is imminent. And that's the breaking news. So we're waiting to see what happens now. Uh, Israel is, a, is on super high alert. But in uh, my estimation, because Iran is very close now to nuclear capability, Israel cannot wait anymore. Biden uh, and, and uh, Trump even before uh, promised there would never be an Iranian nuclear uh, attack on Israel. But it seems like, you know, presidents can promise one thing and do the exact opposite. Biden has been doing the exact opposite the last three years by funding Iran, funding the nuclear program, um, and basically stopping all the efforts of Trump three years ago uh, to, to stop the nu nuclear program. There are all kinds of ways to do it. Uh, Trump uh, uh, had a plan to completely isolate the Iranian economy. Not that it would help very much because the Chinese and the Russians were backing Iran. But uh, finally, Israel has to go it alone. And so it seems that uh, either there's a secret agreement with the U.S. that the U.S. and Israel together will do it, or Israel will have to go by itself, perhaps with the opposition of the United States government. Well, obviously, you know, President Obama has, has always been a friend to Iran. John Kerry never stopped going to Iran to help them skirt UN inspections during Trump's era. And here we are again, Obama's third term. No one doubts that. Uh, no one seriously considers the, the clown in the White House to be in control of anything. And so all that to be said is, I, I wonder, has Netanyahu ever contemplated just going to the world and saying, look, America is funding Iran. Iran is funding Hamas and Hezbollah, and we need this to. I mean, has he just given up, or is it is it politics and and falling on deaf ears, or maybe because he knows the mainstream media would not cover it? Um, I'm I'm curious. At what point do you just call it out? What's really going on, especially for the American people to know? Well, I think that uh, after we, I heard in the news, I think it was yesterday, that some aircraft carrier from the United States has been sent to the Middle East. And the aircraft carrier, many of us are fearful that the US Navy aircraft carrier is not coming for the for Hezbollah or for Iran, they're coming for Israel, meaning to attack Israel. And I have to tell you, I uh, have a very dear friend, I didn't mention him by name in my second book, Christian Revival for Israel Survival, but this man's a pastor. And he was a naval, uh, not an officer, he was a, he was a, a, a sailor in a, a nuclear submarine. And he did a very heroic act one day. And so the captain decided to promote him to officer training. And, uh, as part of the officer training, he had to answer a question. What would you do if you were given orders to nuke Israel? And he laughed. I, did I ever mention this to you? No. So anyway, so the captain asked the sailor, who was a Christian, it says, why are you laughing? I gave you a very serious question. What would you do if you were commanded to nuke Israel? And he said, well, firstly, uh, I wouldn't want to be on that ship because God would destroy the ship. Uh, wouldn't allow Israel to be nuked. Uh, but secondly, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that Israel will ever be nuked. They threw him out of the Navy. He was a hero, and they threw him out of the Navy. Anyway, of course he did. 
uh, the, he, he maintained contact with the captain, who eventually became a very senior commander in the Sixth Fleet, Sixth Fleet Mediterranean, and uh, a very dangerous man to watch, because this is the guy who could push buttons to nuke Israel from the U.S. Navy. Later, the, the sailor from the submarine, who's now a, a pastor, said to me that uh, this commander of the submarine, who gave, asked him the question about nuking Tel Aviv, converted to Islam, received a very senior position as CEO of some Saudi company. And uh, let me just say, the Saudis are not friends of Israel. No. Uh, and the United States is in bed with the Saudis, trying everything it can to be in bed with the Saudis. And uh, if Israel has to be nuked, so be it. What a state of affairs, folks. A lot, of, a lot is happening right now. Uh, Avi, can you shed light on anything regarding Israel and the red heifer? Is that true? Is it false? Is it a rumor? Is it an exciting news? What, what, what are you hearing in regards to that news? Uh, well, among firstly, Israel? firstly, firstly, this is a very, very deep uh, question. There are red heifers, firstly, uh, and I have to tell you, once I was driving on Interstate, what Interstate was it? Twenty-five going through uh, New Mexico, and uh, I was going up into the mountains, uh, uh, Rio Dondo or something, some kind of name like that, um, and uh, I, it went from desert to beautiful, lush green grass as you go higher into the mountains, and then I saw the most unbelievable thing, shocking to the eyes. I saw red heifers. I saw a field full of red cows. Uh, this is like 10, 15 years ago. Meanwhile, I do know uh, about red heifers being shipped to Israel from the United States. Yes. Uh, they've been tested and they are ready to go if, if there's ever a temple. But the point that uh, all your viewers uh, have to understand is that for Jews and Christians, there is a dividing line, both through the Jews and through the Christians, as to who is in favor of animal sacrifice. And there are many Christians who say, well, we don't need animal sacrifice because Jesus was the sacrifice. But there are other Christians who say, yes, Jesus was the sacrifice, but for the Antichrist to come preceding Jesus, there has to be a temple, there has to be an animal sacrifice. So there are Christians who are in favor of the red heifer sacrifice, and there are Christians who oppose it. Among the Jews, there are many Jews from the, from the year 70 A.D., uh, were instructed by the rabbis, there will be no more animal sacrifices because twice we had the temple, twice we lost the temple. And so maybe God is saying something to us that we don't need animal sacrifices anymore. So I'm just saying that there are Jews and there are Christians who want sacrifices, and there are Jews and there are Christians who do not want animal sacrifices. And frankly, if you ask me, uh, I don't want to get involved in it. Uh, my concern is protecting the lives of Jews and Christians uh, in Israel, and protecting the lives of Jews and Christians everywhere in the world. Uh, and of course, my Judeo-Christian Bible Block Party is there to prepare the way for the Jewish Christian Alliance, which will greet the Messiah one day on the Mount of Olives. And, and the animal sacrifices to me are irrelevant. Well, the reason why I ask, one of the reasons, Avi, is because the timing, uh, you know, if, if there is a, a scheduled sacrifice for the first time in thousands of years, you know, isn't that interesting? Um, and some said it was going to happen last weekend. I haven't heard intel of when it has or when it's going to uh, to happen or, or scheduled to happen. But I'm always curious uh, what the response would be among the Islamic world. I'm sure the Islamic world does not want it to ever happen. And, exactly. Well, uh, firstly, I'll tell you something. Even our own rabbis in Israel forbid animal sacrifice because we do not know exactly where on the Temple Mount uh, the sacrifice should be done. In other words, they're using legalities uh, to prevent animal sacrifice. And also, the same rabbis are saying Jews have no business going up on the Temple Mount because the Holy of Holies is there. And it says in the Torah, Anyone who goes up to the Holy of Holies without proper preparation will be killed by God, wow. including baptism. You have to be baptized in a, in a mikvah before you go up onto the Temple Mount. 
Uh, and of course, the Arabs don't want to, uh, want to erase, the Arabs want to erase anything Jewish or Christian, right? Which is pre-Islamic, which is before the sixth, seventh century. As evidenced by what ISIS did in Iraq uh, to the ancient Babylonian exactly. uh, ruins, exactly. and and oh my gosh, Avi, it is always a pleasure to see you. I'm glad that you're doing good. Our prayers are with you. Uh, I was doing a, a show earlier with a. A DJ of a, of a, a well-known business in Amarillo. She said, be sure and tell Israel. <laughs> so you're Israel, uh, uh, the representative to so many of us, uh, that we are praying for them every day. Amen. And so we, 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 we pray love you. Pray for us. Now, Avi, and you we, and I have an opportunity to to not only go live on social media, but also live on, on Wednesday mornings, 9 a.m. Central, uh, on in real time uh, over, over cable networks and TV towers, all five cities in West Texas and New Mexico and, and major cable networks and online platforms, including Roku and others, and as well as social media. So we're very excited about that and hope to see your face again soon. And folks, uh, next Wednesday, 9 a.m. Central is the plan. We hope to see you again because as goes Israel, so goes the world. <laughs> we'll see you next time, Avi. We'll see you next time, folks. God willing. God willing.